So this video is really about the 2016 breadth in physics paper that a lot of you did the other day. Now, um, I know you've done the exam. I've seen a few of the Hitler videos that have come out recently. Don't you focus! She's all here! And I've also seen from my sort of channel stats that a lot of people left their revision sort of till the last minute. And I had this kind of massive jump from my normal sort of 6,000 views a day at the moment, up to 45,000 uh, views in the day before your breadth exam. So onto the paper. So with the paper, generally, I thought it wasn't too bad. It wasn't as bad as maybe some of the kind of specimen and practice papers that were available. Now, something that uh, I've seen a few people talking about some things like the student rooms was the data book. The one you should have is a pink one. This is for the new specification. But some people, I think, got the older yellow ones, which talked about G for 8, 1, G for 8, 2, and so on. Now, pretty much inside, you get exactly the same formulas. Uh, and they haven't changed at all, so that won't have disadvantaged you. But these have been sent to your school, and you should be using the pink data books for your depth exam in a few weeks' time. When it comes to the actual paper, I can't show you inside it because this stuff here has not been published yet by OCR, so I can't show you what's inside, but you know what was inside it. And if you really want to see the break, sort of the breakdown question by question analysis, there's a few links I've put in the video below that take you to the student room and the unofficial mark schemes. But there is one question that people did request that I uh, talked about in my video, and that's the one to do with upthrust. This blood in realm, Kaitler, Yoder, Krebs, and Bogdorf. So question 23B part two, when I first saw it, it wasn't an obvious way to work out the answer. And, uh, you know, talking to the teachers that I, I you know, I teach with, uh, it wasn't a, a very nice question that we thought, especially for the three marks available. So first of all, this is the initial situation. You've got um, the, the mass, which is hanging on the mass balance, and the reading on the scale is 9.0 newtons. The reason being here, the mass or the weight of nine newtons uh, provides a tension in that spring of nine newtons. The whole thing is then submerged completely underwater and the reading on the mass balance goes down. The reason is that although you've got the same force acting down, the nine uh, newtons due to the weight, you now have an upthrust provided by the, the weight of fluid displaced in here. So now you've got an upthrust and that means that because the, effectively the upwards force is balanced by the downwards force, the tension can be less and the tension goes down to 7.8. What that means then is the upthrust uh, is equal to 9 minus 7.8, which is 1.2 newtons. And what we know uh, from Archimedes' principle is that the upthrust is equal to the weight of the water or fluid displaced uh, from within that. What I then said was that density is equal to mass divided by volume, or volume is equal to mass over density. And what we know is that when this is inside this, the, the volume of the metal is equal to the volume of the water that it displaces. So what I then did was if we can equate the volumes together, uh, the mass of the metal over the density of the metal is equal to the mass of the water over the density of the water. And because we know that uh, weight is equal to uh, mg, so the mass times the gravitational field strength, m is proportional to the weight. What I then did was I put some numbers in, and I could have sort of worked out the mass of the metal and the mass of the water, I could have divided it by 9.81, but I didn't really feel the need because that would have been divided again later in the equation. So, I said that uh, the mass of the metal or nine, or the weight of the metal of nine newtons over the density of the metal is equal to the weight of the water over the density of the water. I rearranged this to find the density of the metal, uh, so 9,000 over 1.2, to give the density being 7,500 kilogram meters to cubed. So that's the answer to 23B part two, but you do not need to know that now, just ignore it, just kind of completely focus on the exams that are coming up soon. So uh, my advice then for the next few weeks is basically you know your physics content. If you've, if you've revised for the, uh, for the breadth paper, then you know the physics that's going to come up on the depth. So what can you, can you do to prepare? Well, first of all, uh, you need to do all of the past papers, you know, G for 8, 1, G for 8, 2, um, you know, so that you know the kind of questions that might come up. However, you've probably done that already. So what else can you do? I think you could then look at things like Isaac Physics. Isaac Physics just has a load more questions available. And if you really want to kind of check your understanding, you need to make sure that you do as many level two and level three questions as possible. I know that if you do every single level two and every single level three question, which is about 200 questions in total over the next couple of weeks, you will definitely get an A on the depth paper. And finally, you know, you need to know your experiments, okay? There's only about uh, 12 or 13 or so that you need to know about. For every experiment, you need to know what you need to measure, 
what you need to, um, how you set up the equipment, uh, maybe a graph that you draw any kind of relevant equations. I think that's useful on, this, on the, the breadth paper when you had to know about um, the internal resistance. And if you've done your work, that should be some easy marks. So past papers, Isaac physics, and you need to know your experiments. Uh, apart from that, what else do I have for you? Well, you've seen that I've got videos which cover all of AS physics. And if, you're, if you've do, been doing the OCR work, I have a video that covers every single part of the OCR A2 specification. So everything you're going to learn in year 13, and you, you, know, you might not be feeling it now, but you probably will be doing physics next year. I've got a video that covers all of that. So, um, you know, this is on my other channel, the A-Level Physics Online Year 13. And basically what I'd like you to do is to click here to subscribe to that channel okay so this has another 150 videos and I'm adding more I'm doing more past paper work throughs uh, so have a look at my channel now there's a load of free content you can have a look at so subscribe to that uh, and if you do that then next year don't just leave it to the last minute you know use the, the videos as you're learning the content or before you learn the content and lessons and I know that you're going to understand this this really amazing subject in a bit more detail so click here now and uh, that will take you to my other channel Apart from that, good luck in the depth paper and put any comments below this video, either good or bad, about uh, how you think it's going to go. So thank you very much.